Hey, it's Jerry with TradeTheFifth.com. I want to go through the uh, week and look into next week. Some of the things we've got going on with the indexes. Okay, first thing we're going to look at is the inverted yield curve watch. And as you can see, the three-month, 10-year has uh, come back out of its inversion. Really never got tested on the two-year, 10-year. And the 10-year, uh, 30-year has uh, increased a little bit. Um, you know, the other thing I'm going to talk about really quickly here, this is the plot of the SPX, and I have on an ATR trailing stop indicator, which is free with Thinkorswim, and I use the parameters uh, modified 9 period, 2.9 long, well the long is the switch, but I turn that off, and then exponential moving average. One of the things that I'll point out here is you'll notice that whenever we do make a switch from you know, along here, like the green line is showing that we're long above this uh, ATR trailing stop. Whenever we make a switch, we tend to make a test back. And if it's going to reverse the trend, the test back usually fails and then we come back down. And you'll see that here. For example, we did a switch, came down, we came back and tested it, never closed above it to switch it back. And then we failed. We did have a switch here but then the back test came back through it. So this is a kind of handy little indicator to look at uh, for places where consolidation tends to occur, pullbacks occur, and you get tests for the either resumption of the trend or failure of the trend back in another direction. So it's one thing you might want to take a look at on your own in the future. It's a handy one that I use some from time to time. Okay, another quick thing we'll look at is the sectors. And these are the S&P 500 major sectors like uh, XLP, XLV, XLK technology. This starts at the beginning. This is year to date. So it starts on the first of the year. And you can see that we're, you know, pretty much every sector has had an increase from the beginning of the calendar year back in January and right now tech is the strongest followed by industrial at the bottom we've got healthcare consumer staples notice that in the last um, you know maybe two or three weeks the financials which is one of the largest sectors in the collection of uh, spiders has actually been making a bullish move upwards and um, I, I myself played some long call options in Bank of America and Che B. Morgan. I did take some profits in them given that, uh, you know, it looked to me like, um, you know, going into earnings next week, I didn't want to hold stuff in earnings. And there's a resistance area here. If I highlight that, uh, there's a resistance area right around this area, um, right here. And I decided that uh, given the weekend, or I'd have some decay in options and other things. I didn't want to take a chance. I just took my profits, um, and it was, you know, for me a relatively short-term trade. Notice also I've added the TLT here at the bottom, uh, and this is on a percentage price chart, and you can see that the financials tend to move, uh, not surprisingly, opposite to TLT. When TLT is going up, interest rates are going down. That's generally not great for banks uh, because part of their profits are made on the spread between short-term and long-term rates and when the yield curve flattens uh, tends not to be great for financials so when bonds and TLT are going up financials tend to find a little bit of uh, pressure and you can see that here as we uh, moved up in TLT we did have a move down in banks um, financials pretty significantly it also affects the Russell which has a lot of uh, regional banks and you know other banking uh, within the Russell 2000 so you'll see also the Russell tends to come under pressure when this occurs. Okay, so obviously tech has been strong, continues strong. It's the biggest, uh, the strongest sector at this point and continues to push things higher. And in the, in the, you know, the top three, I'd say in the bullish camp, uh, consumer discretionary, XLY, XLI industrials, and XLK technology are uh, pushing things. And they tend to be the more risk on type sectors to be playing within and one of the things that I've suggested before I think is a good thing to look at uh, again is uh, those of you that build watch lists um, you know one of the good things to do is building watch list relative to sectors and uh, let me go back here Let's 
this thing here. For example, looking at the one of the one of the other sectors that's been pushing up is XLE, which is this dark green line, a little bit hard to see, but energy. And and quite often when you get into the summer months, you get a lot of travel, airlines, uh, you know, people are going on vacation, you get a lot of driving travel, gas tends to go up and oil tends to move up and energy in particular tends to move up uh, seasonally during this area. It's another trade that I typically look at to take longs and if I've got pullbacks I'll end up buying calls and butterflies in XLE. But another thing you can do is look at the stocks within the XLE sector. This is the ETFDB.com, the ETFdatabase.com and you can put in uh, XLE up here in the search box and then when you get it uh, you can look at some interesting things about the XLE and one of them that I do is build a watch list off of that over some of the larger holdings of it so you can see at the bottom I've got the XLE holdings and you can list out um, you know there's two pages of holdings that I'll tend to build a watch list of these stocks and then I'll start looking at charts of them and buying things uh, during a seasonally strong period where I see um, you know activity that I expect from pullbacks to continue long so ExxonMobil Chevron, ConocoPhillips, and so on, you can build a watch list and look at, uh, you know, underlying stocks within a sector and look at potential trade ideas. So I've talked about that before. I'm not sure if anybody's doing it, but uh, tends to be a fairly successful, uh, you know, thing that, that has worked for me in the past and tends to work uh, at this point. For example, you know, when tech was making a pullback, you can look at the underlying stocks, Apple, Google, Facebook, um, and several others. <coughs> Excuse me. So you see, when you get these pullbacks in the ETF, it, it tends to be a good period to look at when you've got an, a strong uptrend. Be looking at buying, let's say, call options or call spreads at a point where everybody's selling them. They tend to be a little bit cheaper. So you're looking for these pullbacks to get in ahead of the crowd. And then, of course, as momentum starts pulling up, it tends to be where the other guys are rushing in. You know, some of the late um, the laggards in the in the tech sector start jumping in. You get a little bullish run up, and then you can sell your you know your um, underlying stock options or whatever you're trading. So that's uh, the sectors. Um, I will mention just briefly uh, before I go into the detailed charts. A couple last things. This is a chart showing the comparison of the SPY, the IWM, which is the Russell, the Q's, and the Diamonds, uh, Dow Industri Industrial. And this one is a comparison from the low that we had on December 24th. And you can see since that period, the SPY is the third uh, in the list here, up 23%. You've got the uh, purple line, which is the IWM, the Russell, and it's up 25% from the low. The, the strong one, of course, has been the Qs. It's up 28.69%, uh, and the laggard right now is the Dow Industrials at 21.12% from the actual low here. And if I look at that uh, year to date, um, take the time frame, and I'll move that daily year to date. Uh, it's a pretty similar picture, right? So this is from uh, January, uh, beginning of this year. And we've got uh, almost 19.2% uh, on the Qs. We've got 16.9% in IWM Russell. And it's had a pretty good week, by the way, right? So this goes back into the close of last week in the last five days. The Russell's had a pretty good week from 13% to almost 17%, about 4%. Uh, we had the Qs go from 16 to 19, about 3%. Uh, the S&P has gone from 13 to 15.3, so it's a little over 2%. And uh, 12 point, uh, down here we had, what, 11% to 13, about 2. I think the Russell was the outperformer of the week. I didn't, you know, it's not an exact calculation, but it looked like it was playing the catch-up trade. We talked about that, I think, a little bit last week, uh, you know, looking at the, some of the things that were going on in Russell. We'll talk about that uh, a little bit more in a second. The very last thing I want to show is the 
VIX relative to the Bollinger Bands and some things to be looking at going into next week. The purple is the SPX. Uh, the VIX is this plot here, right? So the VIX is the 30-day volatility um, uh, measuring the skew and the volatility of put options relative to uh, calls and looking at basically volatility uh, when we're buying puts and this is the vol the uh, Bollinger Bands so you can see when we tend to have uh, pushes down to the lower end of the Bollinger Bands and closes outside uh, or at least periods of activity outside the lower end of the Bollinger Band we tend to get buying activity in the VIX which tends to have a little bit of a pullback in the SPX and you can see that's occurred a few times here right so we had a a touch outside we have a touch outside and after this period we tended to have a little bit of a pullback in the SPX we had another uh, touch outside here and shortly thereafter you know we had another touch to the edge of this Bollinger Band we had a little bit of a pullback and you notice we're getting into a period where we're starting to touch down in the lower end um, I would be just watching this a little bit relative to the Bollinger Bands and looking for maybe a close or a deeper touch outside this and maybe that's going to be a tip off for a little bit of a pullback and using that and the ATR trailing stop I talked about earlier uh, maybe something to look at a little bit carefully as we go forward uh, into the coming uh, days to see how things are going to go into next week. Okay. So we're going to look at the charts here in the IWM uh, as we did last week. We did talk uh, at the close of last week looking at this downtrend line and this major support level. The support wasn't tested. The downtrend line was tested and broken uh, during the week. I wouldn't say the volume was the greatest uh, on the planet. I would have liked to have seen more volume here on the break. Uh, outside of it but we did have a break and you'll notice this dotted line here uh, where I've got my cursor is the 200 day simple moving average and we have actually closed above it on Friday so we'll start to watch that uh, going into next week uh, you know to see if this holds and if we continue to move upwards uh, the next test is going to be the prior swing high we had here at 159.57 which is also that low volume node area that we talked about uh, before on the daily chart to look at uh, you know to see what the IWM is going to be doing we, we are in that high area of the oversold uh, overbought uh, zone we did get a you know breakout in the momentum for MACD the weekly over here in the weekly chart I would say is not in an overbought zone and as you can see, we've had, you know, we've kind of chopped around this as we've moved up in IWM. So I'm not as concerned necessarily about the daily, maybe consolidation. I'd be looking for, uh, you know, some choppy price action as we maybe chop up towards this high, whatnot. But no matter what, all the indexes have had bullish moves uh, and they look like they're, you know, poised to continue higher uh, as we go into next week. Bank earnings are next week, so we should get some you know, price movement activity uh, depending on what the banks are forecasting and how their earnings turn out for the week. Um, you know, we may get some, well, we're certainly going to get some activity one way or the other, but where we go from there is not quite clear. We'll just have to be mindful of uh, what's happening here as things go forward. The Qs have been the strongest. Uh, they are headed towards uh, the all-time high at 187.53. You know, more continued bullish price action. If I looked at anything in the Qs, you can see the 21 um, exponential moving average I have on the chart, as well as the cloud and the 49 simple, or excuse me, 49 exponential, have tended to work as uh, support areas for the Qs, and I'd look for that to continue. But uh, Qs are hitting that stretched out zone again. Uh, we're probably going to be getting into that area on the weekly next week. That's probably an area that I'll look for a little bit of a pullback into the queues, and the pullback zone is probably going to be towards the 21 exponential moving average uh, as we go forward. Certainly it's strong. The weekly continues to have a breakout. It's broken this uh, prior swing high that we had, uh, and there's nothing but bullish uh, momentum that's occurred. But I will point out that the 
you know the the volume is dropping a little bit off here so that's sort of another indication that as we kind of tweak back up into this uh, overbought area for RSI the last time we hit 70 we did pull back you know in this area we did have a pretty steep pullback chopped around for a while then we had the major pullback so it's just an area to watch I think we going into next week um, and, and look at how things are gonna go I will look at the spy um, the spy going into next week of course we did have also a similar breakout with the S&P 500 um, I did put you know these lines here the vertical lines were marking the beginning and the end of the quarter we did break the pivot uh, for the weekly we talked about that as a, a major level of resistance that we busted through it wasn't on significant volume so it's another one to watch we are in the overbought zone uh, for RSI on the daily but not the weekly uh, we did get you know this divergence that we were talking about in the MACD we we're getting higher highs in price and lower highs in momentum has now reversed and we do have a higher high coincident with the higher high in the SPY everything in the indexes right now looks like you know it would take some news event probably to bring it back from <coughs> getting towards all-time highs I have also drawn an extension from you know the swing high we had here to the low the 1272 is at uh, 294 which is pretty much coincident with the all-time highs that looks like an area that 295 area which is also at the mid price between the center of the channel that I've got drawn which you can see here in the monthly right we've got this upward channel we've talked about before uh, we, we have gotten beyond retested and are pushing beyond the center line of the channel the next potential resistance point is probably going to be at the midpoint between the high end of the channel and the center line and that's uh, very coincident with around this 295 area to me that looks like a pretty reasonable place over the next uh, week or two we might be headed especially we get into the thir thick thickness of the uh, earnings season okay on the levels uh, I'm just going to talk real quick through ES and I'm going to turn on the levels we have uh, there we go and I'm going to move to a five minute chart because it's terrible looking on a and I'm going to expand this um, we have you know now a pretty good size gap so Monday we had the big gap up and we never really tested back into it on the regular time hour sessions I have the overnight hours turned off here on this particular chart but you can see we've got a, a pretty big gap below us that has held us support and you know we've had pretty much if you drew a channel you'd see that we've had pretty good upward price action going on in ES so we've got another gap on Friday that did not uh, fully get filled and as I've talked about uh, you know we're now up at the 2900 area and probably headed towards the 2950 zone <clears throat> the expected move is 53 bucks which gets us up to 2950 by the end of the week I have also looked at the ATR since the expected moves have been broken um, you know more repetitively I've started looking at the weekly ATR and we can see that the weekly ATR is at this label here is at 63.85 uh, greater than the expected move so if I was a premium option seller uh, which I would not be at this point myself because we're busting the expected moves set up by options but uh, I'd certainly be looking to start selling outside uh, this 63 zone since we've been tested um, you know three or four weeks in a row and we continue to be somewhat one-sided we tend to be moving up almost every single day and uh, you know I don't you know with the consolidations we have are very short and we just continue pushing higher and higher and higher every day we just haven't found any sellers yet at this point um, and probably won't without a news activity or some really poor earnings um, you know coming out from some of the majors we are starting to get into a period where the comparables year over year are going to be a bit of a challenge I, I'd have to go back and look at when the Trump tax cuts came into play uh, but you know we had some pretty bullish price activity after that and I think as you start looking at the year or year year over year comparisons for earnings 
uh, we're going to start seeing some challenges because we got those big boosts in earnings uh, tied to the tax cuts. And as we start getting to a year-over-year -year comparison, we're going to find that to be a much more difficult thing to start uh, beating in a year-over-year -year comparison. So I think we're going to start finding some resistance uh, up in these zones just based on that thought. And uh, I'd say in the next quarter or two, we'll probably start going to find that. Okay. So that's ES. And Q. Uh, let's wait for the levels to paint. Here we go. Expected move on NQ $172 plus or minus from the close for the week. The ATR is 212, which is uh, certainly greater. Um, and again, the NQ we have a gap below us that was not filled uh, down in this zone in the regular time hour session. As I talked about, we have broken the major swing pivot we had, and we're now continuing to reach for uh, you know higher and higher prices. NQ is close slightly below this pivot here, but you know all the activity seems to be pushing higher. And uh, you know unless I get some indication in the VIX or you know some trailing stop or breaking of pivots to look at a corrective way, you know an ABC correction, everything still looks like it's pointing higher for the week. And the last one I'll look at is YM. Paint, we are above the uh, 200 uh, period simple moving average as we have been on many of them. That's this dash blue line. We did have a bit of a consolidation later in the week. You know, I think a lot of that was driven by the Boeing news. Most of the Dow um, stocks were moving upwards, but I think Boeing had a a challenging day if I recall on Friday and that tended to you know probably hold the YM a little bit in check but it was you know a, a big bullish week we've got another you know we now got two pretty good sized gaps below us in YM never again really tested it you know and we've pushed higher again we have higher prices again you can draw the channel you know here and you can see we just continue to reach for new high prices so until we start breaking you know, trend lines to the downside, you know, on any kind of volume, I don't think we're going to start seeing any major price, uh, you know, other than, you know, upwards, you know, it's a short term price channel here, right? So, and still we start breaking some of these channels and getting some pullbacks to these gaps. Everything to me looks still like uh, the price, the place of least resistance is up towards the all-time highs everything is pushing in that direction all right folks i'm going to call it it quits there um, the levels will be shared by paul along with the video uh, good luck trading next week and uh, if you have any questions give me a shout thanks take care bye